Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm highly honored to be able to present to you uh, the lecture issue. Uh, it's an issue that is a uh, great concern to all of us in Zimbabwe, particularly people in Harare. Uh, the way I am addressing the presentation is I'm going to cover those various uh, topics listed. Uh, to start off with, I'll show you a picture of the beautiful lecture. If you look on the surface, it looks beautiful. But other things about lecture are not so beautiful. First, the description of this lake. The lake is found on the Miami River. So you have the Miami catchment and Lake Chivero is in the upper reaches of the Miami catchment and the lake we are talking about is this one here. It is smaller than the lake which is uh, lower down. It is supplied by water from the Mkwisi rivers, uh, the Miami River principally, uh, and those lakes come from a catchment that has got uh, urban settlements, the Harare, the capital city of Zimbabwe is located in the upper catchment. A dormitory town for Harare, the Chitungiza, is also located in the upper catchment of uh, Lake Chivero. We also have smaller settlements uh, like Lua and uh, Airport in that location. So we have a situation whereby you have a lake that is located downstream of a major urban uh, area and that is uh, one of its uh, problems. The lake is small, it is a main lake reservoir, not very old compared with those ancient Greek lakes. Uh, small uh, demo, I spend a lot of time in Lake Kaliba and the demo is certainly much bigger than that and it is also rather shallow compared to Lake Kaliba which is maybe 120 meters and or Lake, uh, uh, Lake Tanganyika which are much deeper. So what is this problem? We have a very very highly polluted lake with uh, eutrophic uh, conditions and here I show, I'll show you waters from the pelagic zone at various depths and the condition of that water in terms of uh, COD, nitrogen and phosphorus and also compare it with other lakes, Lake Victoria which we have just uh, talked talk about and Lake Biwa uh, which you are perhaps more familiar with. The COD as measured uh, recently is around 18 uh, micrograms per value. We also have got uh, nitrogen, which is certainly higher than one. Uh, phosphorus, which is as can reach a maximum of eight. We compare it with Lake Victoria. This value here is a third of what you find in Lake Chivero. And in terms of uh, nitrogen, you find that you find very low levels and even lower levels in Lake Biwa compared to what you find in Lake Chivero. And in phos with phosphorus, there is even a bigger dis difference between Lake Chivero conditions and those of other lakes. So Lake Chivero is a very, very polluted lake. And yet, Lake Chivero is a very important uh, lake in the region. It supplies uh, potable water for the city of Harare, city of Chitunguiza also. There are fish resources that are utilized by cooperatives as well as port fishermen, which will, will be affected by the polluted condition. And we have got a recreational park, 
and everybody goes for recreation in an area that looks beautiful, but with the polluted uh, situation, all these resource use function of that lake have been uh, impacted. I'm going to talk next about the causes of uh, these conditions. One of them that I've already mentioned is the fact that Lake Chigoro is downstream of a major industrial area, therefore receives wastewater from the urban areas. There is an issue of population sizes. Uh, being downstream of uh, the cities that I have mentioned, it means that there is a high population in the catchment of uh, Lake Chigoro. And to make it worse, the population is also increasing as shown in this figure here. Even here, this only goes to 2,000. And if we continue, perhaps, at the same rate, we are probably way up there. So it's not only a fact that the population is large, but there is an increase in the population. Factors that are leading to this increase of the population is migration into the urban areas, rural urban migration, because people are seeing opportunities in the urban areas in contrast to the rural areas where the livelihood problems. The population increase and the large population in, uh, in the catchment result in the, resulted in an increase of the phosphorus level. It also resulted in an increase through time uh, of conductivity. You also have high metal concentration in the water. This is a lead concentration compared to World Health Organization uh, standards for drinking water. Uh, this is uh, cadmium and if you compare it also with the WHO standards. So we have levels that far exceeds the levels that you would expect in drinking water, which has got long-term health implications. Another of the challenges is wastewater treatment. That uh, there are dysfunctional wastewater treatment. A typical example is the Zengeza sewage treatment plant and I'm not ashamed to be talking about it because it was built by the Japanese government through JICA. But it is now functional. You will not expect to find such uh, weed growth out of blooms, the switch in front, and certainly not a tree growing in the digestion. <laughs> and because of this situation, we have got sewage which flows out of that uh, treatment plant. We also have problem with the pumps that move the sewage from the uh, residential industrial areas to the sewage treatment plant. One example is this um, pump in water, which is completely covered in water. Uh, and this is the discharge from that uh, pump house. You find the same situation in the Chitungiza area. And because of pumps that is not working, a pump that is not working in Harare, this is a stream that is leading from the pump house. So we have got a complete uh, disaster in terms of uh, handling of uh, sewage uh, waste. The reason for this is uh, social economic problems that the uh, Zimbabwe first uh, starting from maybe 1997. Uh, up to perhaps 2008, 2010, which we have not recovered from. Uh, so the government does not have money, the municipalities doesn't have money, and the uh, civil, civil uh, uh, people, the uh, domestic uh, uh, people using the domestic, producing domestic goods also do not have uh, means of paying for the service. So we have a situation where this situation uh, is like that and there is hardly resources to change that. There is also a problem with the 
amount of nitrogen and phosphorus which we measured at one of these uh, uh, non-functional sewage treatment plants, the Zengeza sewage treatment in Chitungeza, and there are massive amounts of phosphorescent nitrogen which are flowing from those into the uh, Chiro catchment. In addition to that, we also have problem with non solution, pollution, which is arising from this some manufacturing for the sofas, the furniture uh, in the market. These are part of milli, milli shelves. We have got uh, pipe leakages, water, water pipes leaking in the city. So we have got a large amount of non-point pollution. These are the tons of up to 300 tons of nitrogen and 100 tons of phosphates from non-point pollution. This is produced per year. And we also know that the high hypertrophic conditions that the lecture experienced in the past was caused by nutrient levels that were lower than what we are finding now is non-point pollution. So what this means is that even if we are to solve the problems of the non-functional sewage treatment plant, we still have massive problems with the non-point source of pollution. We have another problem of degradation. Uh, this is soil coming from a maize field. This is uh, exposed soil in a wetland that is where we are going to build houses. These are trenches for servicing those tents. This is a path that doesn't have concrete like we have here. So it is not kind of protected. So water flows in them, causing erosion. And as a result, the silt, the silting of lake level, which reduces the uh, storage capacity. Other problems uh, we have with the wetlands. These are the wetlands in the lake Chilero basin. We've got quite a large number of wetlands. Three of these were studied by students uh, who are supervising to check the size and the uh, activities that are affecting the uh, wetlands. Uh, we showed that the size of wetland agriculture from 1972 diminished to a very small strip in 2008. The amount of uh, Settlement, houses, etc., increased to, I think, reaching a maximum in 1995. Uh, the dryland agriculture also increased. So we actually practically lost the wetlands. And so the three wetlands that we started has shown a decrease in the area, surface area of the wetlands. We also had other problems, such as uh, variable climate. This is the flashing period of Lake Chigero. This is two years. You have runoff that will flash the area, the, the Lake Chigero. Every, very often. And here you have got runoff that is too low to flash uh, the lake in some years. So if you look along these lines in different years. There are times when Lake Chivero doesn't flush at all. So the content of Lake Chivero during this time when Lake Chivero is not flushing, you are, it's almost formed from purely wastewater, which is running from the city of Harare. And we have said that this wastewater, the, the Chivero is used to, for potable water for the city of Harare. So we'll just be pumping back this sewage back uh, to the city. And this has consequences, some of which are listed there. We have got uh, weed infestation in the rivers and lake chiller itself. We have got alcohol blues. Uh, you have got high cost of purifying water. Uh, the cost arising from needing to use many chemicals, large quantities of these chemicals. Instead of using one chemical to treat water, you can use now eight chemicals and large quantities of those and the filters clog, so you need to backwash those filters using water that has already been treated. And the chemicals leave residues, uh, which also is a problem. 
in the uh, wetland area which I talked about, which were decreasing because of uh, human activities, you find that there are high levels of coliforms. These were measured in two days, the purple line and the darker line. Those are two days of sampling. In the protected wetland area, you found that most of the sites had very low levels of coliform bacteria. And in where the area was used for subsistence agriculture, most of the places had water with very high uh, coliform bacteria. This is consequence in that these areas during the time when the Harare water is not um, sufficient, people use shallow wells dug in the wetland to get water. And if you find this high level of uh, enteric bacteria, it means that people are expe exposed to risk of diseases. And that really actually happens in that you find health problems, uh, gastric, Uh, problem of uh, one sort of the other. We've got outbreak of cholera and typhoid, and this graph shows an increase in those enteric uh, diseases death from, and we also have a uh, problem with uh, cancer arising from use of polyterminal. As I've uh, shown you, we have got a lot of challenges of pollution, and they are arising from a variety of causes. Therefore, we have got a variety of government issues there involved. And because of those large array of government uh, problems, the lack of funds, the technology which is inadequate, uh, the people who cannot participate, we actually need a mechanism such as the IOBM to address uh, all these uh, problems if we could uh, solve the so that we are able to solve the problem of uh, lecturing. So in terms of the LBM, it has been applied, or is going to be applied in the form that uh, my colleagues have been talking about. Uh, I, I LBM application uh, for lecturing, we have been having a partnership with uh, IREC, and they have assisted us uh, in, um, in many workshops, uh, giving us information on how the IOBM works, and we have made uh, some degree of um, achievement. First, we have managed to have the stakeholder meetings where we recognize that we had a large problem of lecture level uh, and that we need solutions for those problems. We've also recognized that. Uh, the IOBM approach is a very good approach because it's broad based uh, and we agreed to form an IOBM platform which now has got an interim committee which is coordinated by the University of Zimbabwe. So I'm re representing the University of Zimbabwe uh, on that uh, platform. We also did a stakeholder assessment on uh, the government issues but we still need to put more effort on that. We also identified some major issues that require attention. These are the issues. Uh, industrial pollution should be reduced, repair of uh, sewage uh, <coughs> plant, solid waste, urban agriculture need to be managed, engage communities in monitoring, uh, protection, enhancement of wetland is needed, and we also need to establish long-term monitoring of our system so that we are able to solve this problem. We also were given opportunity through ILEC to interact with uh, the Indian uh, counterparts who had uh, eco uh, technology in place in terms of the uh, green bridges, and they came to assess our rivers. Here I give you a picture of the team of, uh, from the University of Zimbabwe together with uh, the Indian experts. We have a lot of challenges in terms of implementation of uh, the IOBM. We have inadequate understanding of the approach. Everyone was talking about IWRM for a long time. They talked about uh, river basin, uh, integrated river basin management for another time. So people are a little bit confused, what does this mean? And so we need information and training on that part to improve competence in the IOBM process. 
we also need resources to fight this uh, process. But we hope that uh, at the end of the uh, process, there is good news that we are going to sustainably manage the next level, and myself and my friends will be happy, I think.